We are ready to sit down with Mr. John Mayer and let him do the talking. Hey, uh, Sammy Hagar's Rock and Roll Road Trip. I'm sitting here at the legendary Fillmore Auditorium in San Francisco, and I got my good newfound buddy, Libra Cobble Wobble partner, Mr. John Mayer is in the house. John, thanks for coming you, and doing Thank this for Thank you for me. asking me to do it. Well, it was uh, pretty easy because after we got together in Cabo that time, I, you know, we walked in, we did a shot. Three minutes later, we're on stage for about an hour. I'm going, this guy, he Just, knows how to do this stuff. You know, I beg for guys like that. Yeah, I've always been able, been able to sort of go into that stage time and just let it, let it roll. And also, it's, um, it's a really fun challenge. It's a batting cage, you know? <laughs> it's like a batting cage. Batting batting cage. It's like yeah. someone says, here's a song. And if you've heard the song and you've played guitar long enough, you sort of have to beautiful mind it really fast. And, and that's always really fun for me. Like, we did Finish What You Started, and I went, OK. I'm, we I'm, did it. I'm doing Finish What You Started, and I'm like, oh, there's a pretty involved chicken picking solo in here. <laughs> and I go, well, how do I get around it? You just go through it. Just do it. And it ends up being somewhat like it, but you end up getting the love for having attempted the jump. No, you, you didn't know what I mean? You tore it up, John. <laughs> but, but do you think that you're, I'm not a school musician. I'm mm -hmm. a completely ear guide. I can't read, I can't write, never even, and I can't read or write, period, almost. Right, right. But, but do, do you really think it has helped you? I mean, you're such a great guitar player and you can Thanks. play any kind of music. Do you think the school, the whole, the Berkeley School of Music, is that necessary for someone? Would you recommend it? Uh, I, it's funny, people ask me, they say, I'm, uh, should I go to Berkeley next year? Should I not go to Berkeley yeah. next year? And I go, it's what you make of it. Now, I, for the record, can't read or write music myself, but I understand a bit of theory. But ultimately, like, I was always my own kind of theorist. You know, I think if you listen to a song, if you play a chord on a song on a guitar and you go, that sounds like that chord from that song, you're already starting to teach yourself, you know? So I was pretty self-taught, somewhere in, in between um, kind of my own weird theory and also knowing, I think if you're a songwriter or a guitar player, if you just know the sort of the solfege, like the do, re, mi and intervals and stuff like that, and then make enough mistakes and figure out, they're like, the guitar neck's like, um, like neighborhoods. You know, you, you know this, like, you're like, oh, we're in G? I do? Oh, is it a blues song? <laughs> you're like, oh, oh, I'm in the, well, you know oh, yeah, playing. okay, yeah, and you go, you go, oh, I'm in this neighborhood. I know my friends <laughs> around here. I'm, there. I'm in the G. And, and then you go, oh, I'm going to mess around, go with some other things. And you go, oh, I'm in a no man's land. I don't know where I am. <laughs> so for me, I've just invented my own little maps and stuff. Uh, but it depends on your personality type. And I'm really half taught and half sort of magical thinking that I've invented, which I think makes a really you good You have to mix. be creative, because but the three school guys that I've, I've played with, you, Eddie Van Halen, and Joe Satriani, my three favorite guitar players, no joke. Can I, I have think the tape you of guys, that? When you... Yes, you can. <laughs> Thank you. And it's like playing with you guys is always, you just seem to be one notch above when you have some kind of a schooling or, or able to understand mm -hmm. music a little deeper mm -hmm. than, than the guys, that, the blues guys that yes. I came from. And then we just jam and, but you, you know, you say, hey, you know, go to that, you know, chord. And they go, uh, what chord's that? You know, to where you, right. you know, I just think it's valuable for young kids that oh, probably absolutely. look up to you. Absolutely. There, there's the format, a certain way that you format, um, taking something you didn't know, learning it and where you put it so that you can use it. Yeah. So for me, when I first started playing guitar, everything was not about knowing it to know it. It was about knowing it so you could play more on the guitar. So I was never into the race of how much you knew. I still can't have conversation about theory. Like I'll play, I have a friends who are incredible players and they'll go, I can't believe you did that mixolydian thing over that chord. I go, that's a mistake. <laughs> you know what I mean? You go, that's, that's a what Joe does today. Yeah, yeah. You go, that's a problem. And they go, yeah, because they love They go like, that's out. And you go, that's wrong. No, creativity and schooling are two different things. Right. I, I really believe that. Right. You know, you can create, you can be a, a, a educated idiot and you can be a, you know. A, a, a savant a, sort of street guy. Yeah. Right. Right, right, right. And, and be a genius. So, so all that's cool. But, but I'm just curious about that. But the things that crack me up about you, John, it's like I'm a, I'm a big fan. There's no joke about it. Thanks. And uh, you have been, you've got the wackiest career. You have done so many crazy things. Is your, I, I would imagine your manager, your agent, and your record company want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can switch them out anytime you want. So, oh, well, some that... of them are harder to switch out. No, no. you know, at first they did. At first they did, and then they learned to trust uh, that there's an instinct here. Yeah. It's an instinct. It is, there is, is no other feeling at play here than um, what's the next thing that's going to excite me. And also I have um, a big fear, I have a big, uh, I have career claustrophobia. <laughs> I hate, I hate the idea that like you get known for something and everybody yeah. goes, finish line. 
And yeah. you, I go, well, that's it? That's all we do? Well, now you write it for a while, and you go and you collect all interested. the fame and the fortune, and you get all the, you've got awards, I and mean, you got a couple of I got of Grammys, awards, right? I got it, and I went, oh, what? Uh, Does oh, it mean anything? It meant something, it but, does. but but uh, it's hard to explain. For me, I was like, oh, I don't want to just do this the whole rest of the time. And I mean, I dropped in at the top. I mean, I got helicoptered into the top of my career. <laughs> and I was ready to, I had all this climbing equipment. I was so excited to climb. Uh, and then they were like, no, no, you didn't no, miss we're anything, dropping John. you in. No, well, you didn't miss anything. I did miss no, something. you did. Well, I'm so for people, I'm, no, that's I know. a real joke. I You're 100% right. But well, for me, yeah. Yeah. the journey is The definitely. journey, you want wind through your hair. And if you start out at the top, the only way to get wind is to drop. So then you start getting daredevil, and you're like, well, I want to try this, and I want to try that. And oh, I, you've done that. And you, yeah, well, you just start poking around. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. at the time, uh, did not feel good at all. I was, I, I never was into like, well, you know, F them if they can't take a joke. I was like, what do they say? You know, I was always really sensitive. <laughs> who's, who's John Mayer now? Like, what are you going after the dead? Let's say the uh, dead's, you know, once that's done. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, I'm not sure it'll ever be done. The dead, yeah, I, you know? hope, I hope it doesn't get, and to hear, you know, to hear Bob Weir talk about it, he wants this continue, he wants this to continue uh, after oh, they're they're touring. Oh, they're 100 And so, they're I, you know, I think But I mean, what would grooming. you like to do as John Mayer as a solo? I mean, what's oh, your well, vision now? What are you looking at? Here's I mean, what kind of music? Well, uh, uh, I want to hear it. It's in a, I was thinking, of some, what if I asked her, like, with a, humming a song? Uh, like real specific, I uh, I now have broken out of this mold of being a solo artist, um, and I love being a solo artist, but I can't be a solo artist all the time. I can't yeah, talk about myself all the time. I agree. I can't do press about myself all the time. Most of those answers I don't know, so I just make up and put big words in them. I I, I have, a, I have a, the older I get, the harder it is to self reflect every day with an interview or something, and it gets harder as a musician who's a solo artist to keep using the same color paints. Yeah. You're you. You're, I'm me. We're I join all, bands when I get you bored. Have to, you because have to, yeah. You run out of paint. You know, you run out of colors to paint. Where you go, here's another blue period thing. Here's another blue period thing. Here's another blue period thing. And you go, you know, everybody else wants more of this, but this is supposed to be my ride. This is supposed to be this incredible magic carpet ride. And so what I do now is keep it all interesting. And through all these little mistakes and bumps and bruises and weird things, people went, what's going on? I think I've come out now of the tunnel and I can turn around and go, this is a really cool career. This is a really cool. Oh, career. you got a great. You know career. what I mean? Oh, no, you got a great career. And so it's you a broke the ice. Thing. You broke the mold to where you're not expected. Now no one knows. Uh, you know, is, is expecting you to do this or that. That's right. So you're you're free. That's right. Man, to change shackles off. That's right. I never. You're a free man, John. I was, John. Uh, I was yeah. Oh, you're closing the your, your disclosure. You're closing the interview. Up. No. Oh. No. I just want to let you know you're a free man. Thank it's you. It's all good. Thank you. He's free. So He's can free. I go? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I'm sitting here now with my good buddy, maybe the best guitar player on the planet, none other than Joe Satriani. <laughs> and Joe's kind of a shy guy, so I gotta pull things out of him. Joe, I've uh, known Joe so long, he's like, he's he's loosened up with me a couple of times, but how you feeling today, Joe? I'm feeling pretty loose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been drinking? Look no, out, no. look out. I always wanna ask you these things, and when we're on a business situation with Chicken Foot or, or, or like this Acoustic Fork Cure, it's hard to ask you a, a, a question about you know, personal things I need to know about you. Like, for instance, when you, you've written so much music, and you write music, you don't write lyrics because you don't have to sing them, but you write a melody just like a singer would sing. Mm. And do you hear that music in your head, or do you write music, like write it in chord changes and... and oh, I hear it in my head. Yeah, I imagine melody trying to represent a story about a person, an event, a place, I, maybe I make it up, maybe it's a fantasy or something like that. And, and there's, I feel a direct connection between the phrasing, the notes I'm choosing, and the story that I'm trying to convey ultimately to the listener. And so it, it's more of a natural process than what you would think. It's, I'm not sitting there writing on manuscript paper. Yeah, that's what I wonder, because I see you when you write music for Chicken Foot, and, mm -hmm. and I'm uh, stuck with the lyrics, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, choose to do the melody myself, but uh, the melodies you choose when we're writing a song together are so different than what I would, I would sing, because I don't hear the melody in my head. I just mm -hmm. start singing the melody. So, but you hear something in your head, and when you tell me, you know, like uh, a couple times you would say, 
uh, well, you could sing this line right here. I go, wow, that's just nothing like something I would sing. So yeah, yeah. I just wondered if it was just because you wrote it out or you heard it in your head with that. But that's interesting because um, you write pieces like Bach or something. You come up with the title, A Fawn in the Woods, and you try to make your music sound like that, right? You know, here's the big difference is that when you have the, the gift of being able to get this feeling, create a story, create lyrics, and then communicate that so you've got these lyrics I don't have the lyrics right that I at my disposal it's not in my toolbox so we really do work on a different melodic approaches so take a song like sexy little thing I never would have come up with your melodic approach that's and why we make a good team that's Joe. perfect right that's what you want you want that weird magic people coming in with ideas that surprise the other one right yeah. and they create that special magic guitarists, you and Jeff Beck, oh, that I know. Amazing. I mean, you know, Eddie Van Halen, great guitar, you know, Neil Schoen and all these guys played with them all. But when you guys play uh, a melody, to me, it's closest thing to a voice of any oh, other guitar players on the planet. And you know, I'm a singer, so I can tell you, I'm sitting there going, damn, I mean, it sounds like you're speaking words almost, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm just really impressed by that. But the kind of guy, you, you know, you'd be working in a band with me, I, I, the kind of guy I am who is like, I don't like to rehearse, you know that, right? <laughs> I don't like to work hard on things. I, if it doesn't come instantly to me, mm -hmm. I could never be Joe Satriani because, you know, I'm, I'm like, if I don't get it the second time, I'm going, ah, next. You know, hey, I want to do something like this. It's real easy for me to do. It's never easy to sing, though. But does a guy like me drive you nuts being in a band with a guy like me? No, Come on, be honest. No, you know, I, you know I love it. It's because you, <laughs> you have that special gift. You can not, first of all, not only I would say your guitar playing is right up there with your singing. You, you, they're both your number one tools, right, your gifts. But you have that third gift, which is you can communicate. And that, no one can learn that. You're born with it, and you're a born communicator. So you walk on stage so I can take three steps back, and I can just sort of really pay attention to Chad and Mike and just slip into the groove. I love that. Um, when I'm doing my solo stuff, I know that I'm sort of like the lead singer. I'm the, I'm the main guy telling the story. And so it's just sort of like such an intense focus. Every little thing I'm, I'm, uh, um, I'm worrying about, I'm focusing on, I'm trying to celebrate every little nuance about the song. And it's different than being in a band where the other three guys equally are just throwing it out there 100%. You know Unfair what I mean? Unfair question, Joe. <laughs> okay. If you had to pick one, chicken foot or solo, for the rest of your life. Oh, for the rest of my Ooh, life? Yes, imprisonment. <laughs> <laughs> well, can, can I have a little... Uh, what if, during a chicken foot show, I got to do a few solo pieces? I'm always begging you to do that, and you say, no, I don't like showboat, and you don't like doing that stuff. No, because I'd like to present, like, those big songs that have a particular mood, you know, like Flying in a Blue Dream. It's actually a very delicate piece of music, and in order for it to really take off, everybody has a specific job in the band. You can't just go up there and do a version of it to get it to really work. Well, we'll get to the, uh, the real answer to that question in part two of this interview sometime in the future. But every year, this acoustic for a cure that we do, and you know, like I said, Joe has been involved, everyone just plays three or four songs a, pe a piece, and the idea is to strip us down. You know, Joe doesn't get to have his whammy bar and his no 35 marshals with three million watts of power and his pedal board with 7,200 effects, <laughs> and, he, and you strip him down to just an acoustic guitar, and he's still great. <laughs> Oh, he pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs>